Good morning, church. Good to see all of you on this Sunday morning. And I will say a beautiful Sunday morning. I know it's raining and it's been raining since Friday, but we know we've needed the rain. And uh, considering the way it's fallen in some other parts of the country as Hurricane Helene moved through, we're pretty fortunate that we're just getting some pretty steady showers that we needed without trees being blown over or the loss of life. So I praise God for the rain. I praise God for the way we're receiving it, and I praise God for all of you being here to worship on this last Sunday in September. Welcome to each and every one of you. My name is Reverend Dan Bogri. I'm the senior pastor here at Rocky River United Methodist Church, and normally I'd be serving alongside Pastor Paul Bennett. He is at the Men's Adventure Weekend, so Pastor Paul and a, a big handful of gentlemen from our church are uh, winding down their Men's Adventure Weekend away out at a campground in Sandusky. And so we pray that they are able to dry out and make their way home safe and sound. Uh, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, I can't wait to meet you following the service. Please let me know this is your first Sunday here. Uh, we say here at this church, it's all about the story. We exist to help people meet Christ in the midst of their story. And I can't wait to start to get to know yours as you start to get to know the churches. And we also have a gift for you. It's a gift pack about the information of the church, how to get connected but then also a gift card to either one of our local coffee shops or to Mitchell's Ice Cream, just a small way of saying thanks for giving us a chance so that we can start to get to know your story. As you came in, uh, you received the bulletin uh, with so many different things going on within the life of the church, ways for your story to come to life, ways for your story to be in service, ways for your story to study uh, with other people in Bible studies and we want to make sure you don't miss out on any of those opportunities. Please take time early this week to catch up. Go to our website to get the full breadth of all the things happening within the life of our congregation. But I'm going to highlight a few of those because they're right on the, uh, the, the, the docket coming up this week. First of, all, first of all, Upward Basketball and Cheerleading Registration opens on October 5th or October 1st. So if you're looking at playing uh, basketball or cheerleading, uh, in your five years old to sixth grade, that registration opens up on our website October 1st. Also, a week from today, our potluck and family sorting night at our Cleveland campus. Uh, we call that Story Church, uh, 9900 Madison Avenue. And within that, we have a Twice Blessed free store. So we invite you and your family to come down next Sunday at 4.30, uh, where we have a potluck, and then we sort through the donations to get them ready for the day that our store is open. Also want to let you know that this is Theo and Bell Mall Society Conversation Sunday. So for those of you that aren't aware, we have a, a Theo and Bell Mall Society endowment here at Rocky River United Methodist Church. And that fund goes to underwrite all of our plant expenses, new parking lot, new boilers. When we painted this entire space last summer, um, all those things come out of uh, Theo and Bell Mall Society so that we don't impact our operating budget. After the service, I'm going to invite you to make your way out into the gathering area where you will see that so many people have become a part of it, that our giving tree had to be extended with new branches because so many of you are so faithful to say, I want to impact people's lives for generations to come long after I'm gone. That is following the service. I invite you to make your way. And then lastly, you see in your bulletin, Tables and Treats is coming up. It used to be Trunk or Treat in the parking lot, but we got affected by the weather so many times, we just moved it indoors. So we call it Tables and Treats. You can find out more about it. You can register a table, and we would love to have you be a part of that. So, so many things going on. Please take time to read your bulletin. Go to our website and catch up. But I know that you are here to worship this morning, first and foremost. I invite you then to join me as we open with prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the rain. We know that our ground here has been so parched and cracked from the dryness that we've been experiencing. We need the rain. We thank you for the way that you've brought it slow and easy and peaceful. So many of us today, Lord, as we gather, may feel like our lives are dry and parched, and we wait for your life-giving rain. I pray that in the midst of the service today, through the songs, through the message, through our giving, through our prayers, through our gathering, that your holy, refreshing rain would fall into our parched land. These things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 
I invite you then to stand as you are able and join me in the opening hymn number 160, 160. And we gather this morning to rejoice, to give thanks, and to sing. And I cannot think of a better way to celebrate as we gather this morning than to rejoice, to give thanks, and to sing. So I invite you to celebrate with me those things as we gather this morning with our call to celebration. It's printed in your bulletin and today comes to us from Psalm 40. And I invite you to please read responsively. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, The Lord is great. Indeed, the Lord is great, and that is why we gather each and every Sunday morning to call on his presence in this place, yes, and in each and every one of our hearts. So join with me in that prayer of invocation as you see it printed in your bulletin. Let's pray together. Great God of love and of power, I want to thank you today for all of the people you have placed in my life who are still searching for the way and the truth and the life. It has been a blessing to get to know them as friends and family. Fill my heart with your Holy Spirit today to help me learn the language of those in my life who have not yet met your Son, 
in the midst of their story. Then, filled with the Holy Spirit, may I share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is in his strong name that I pray. Amen. Thank you, and I invite you to please be seated. And as all of the adults take their seat, kids, come on up for the children's message. Come on up and have a seat on the chancel rail. Come on up. Come on up. Good to see everybody today. Come on up. I was, uh, I was back at Lowe's this week, and they had popcorn out there again. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, they got me with the popcorn bags for the Boy Scouts again out at Lowe's. All right, come on up, everyone. Good to see everybody. <clears throat> okay, today I'm talking about language and how we learn other people's language and how you learn the language and how to speak it. And so when you get older, you might, in high school, you might take Spanish. When I was in high school, we had to pick between Spanish, Latin, German, and French. And so then we took classes on how to speak other people's language. And I'm sure that you're going to have the same. Both my boys at Rocky River took Spanish, so they learn how to speak Spanish. But did you know pictures can teach us about other people's language and what they're all about? So I'm going to show you a picture, and you tell me what this logo is from. Can anyone tell me what logo this is? What is it? McDonald's. Anyone else recognize this logo? Right? So when you think of McDonald's, what do you think of? What? Cheeseburgers. What? Happy Meals. A 20-piece chicken nugget. Fries. What do you think of when you think of McDonald's? Hmm. Books? Okay, you go to a different McDonald's than I go to. All right, all right. But sometimes maybe in a Happy Meal they might give books out. Okay, so that's their language. Cheeseburgers and Happy Meals. How about this one? Anyone know this one? What is it? Nike. Nike. Tell me about Nike. What do you know about Nike? Go ahead. Shoes? What else? Swirly logo? Sports? All right, so just from these images, we know their language. Here's a, here's a tough one. What about this one? Anyone know this one? Hmm. It's a car brand. Mercedes, right? Okay, what do you know about Mercedes? What do you think? They're shiny. What else? They're cars. Anything else? They're expensive. What else about cars? Um, they have wheels. You're very good at this. Yes. All right. So we know the language of those symbols. Isn't it amazing that I didn't even show you words and yet you know their language? And that's what we're talking about. But we want people to know our language as Christians. So what's this symbol? Anybody? What is it? The cross. Very good. Just a simple cross. So if you say you're a Christian, it means this is our symbol. What, is this, what should this symbol say about us? What should it say? What kind of people are we? The Holy Cross? Yep. Holy Ghost? Holy Christ. Very good. What else does this say about us as Christians? What kind of, what kind of language should our lives show to other people? Yes. Moms, okay, interesting, yes, what else? We believe in God, what else? We believe in Jesus? We believe in Mother Mary, yes? Love, that is the most important language we can share. Do you know you don't even have to use words to share love? How can you share love with your friends without even using words? Be kind. High fives and hugs? Wow! How about praying for them? Those are all different ways that we can use language without even saying words. So I want you to remember that next time you see all those logos that I shared, that remember, we share the most powerful logo in the world, and it's that of the cross, okay? Let's do a closing prayer. Will you do an echo prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for the cross. Help that to be my language of kindness and forgiveness and grace and love. 
May I use actions first and words later to show the love of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful work, everyone. Okay, you can over with Miss Quint to Sunday school. Good job. Then sings my soul, 
my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Thank you, Jeff, for reminding us of that plain and simple truth of how great God is and that that God in heaven cannot wait for us to bring our prayers to him each and every week and, in fact, each and every day. So I invite you then to please turn to your um, meditation sheet, which can be found in your bulletin. And in there, those are folks who have reached out to us and said, please be in prayer for these situations within our lives. And so first of all, I lift up the fact that there is a carnation on the altar today. And as you know, in the tradition of Rocky River United Methodist Church, it means we have lost one of our members in the past week. So I lift up uh, the friends and family of Dee Vosmick, who passed away on September 24th. Uh, this past week, uh, her daughter Lori Inks uh, let us know, and uh, funeral plans are in the works. We do not know the details as of yet, but we ask you to keep Lori Inks, uh, Dee's daughter, and the whole family in your prayers as they go through this difficult time. But at the same time, there's a rosebud on the altar, which means we're having a baptism. I lift up Darshell Creighton, who will be baptized at our harbor service. Darshell is an adult who gave her life to Christ through our ministries at Story Church, and because of that, she wants to be baptized to celebrate her newfound faith in Christ, and we will celebrate that at the harbor service a little bit later on this morning. Uh, prayers for Dr. Richard Treat, who had heart bypass surgery this past week. Uh, Judy, his wife, did reach out to us and say that everything went very, very well, and now he will be on the road of recovery, so they pray, ask that you would pray for that recovery to be speedy, and as pain-free as possible. Lift up George Cadwallader, who will be having surgery on October 2nd. He goes to Harbor, I'm sorry, the chapel service every week, and I know that he would really appreciate you praying for him on the 2nd. Prayers for Daniel and Michelle Tritt and the passing away of Daniel's son Jacob this past Wednesday. Uh, we lift up Daniel and, and Michelle and the whole family during their very, very difficult time. And the beautiful flowers you see the center of our altar this morning are given in celebration of 31 years of marriage by Larry and Jean Gilbert, and they also uh, do that in honor of their California families, and also they said their church family. So those flowers are up there for you uh, as a gift from Larry and Jean Gilbert. Those are the ones that I lift before you. I show you the ones on the meditation sheet, and then also I invite you to bring the ones that you have this morning on your heart. May we all go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, I am thinking of all the people who lost their lives this week from Hurricane Helene, who thought it would just be another week, and then all of a sudden, everything has changed. They're making funeral arrangements or trying to figure out how to rebuild a home or business that has been completely destroyed. We thank you, Lord, for the rain that we received as a part of Helene when that storm has weakened so substantially that it's just a drizzle for us. But for those a few days ago, it was a matter of life and death. Lord, I thank you that even though things change for those families, one thing has remained the same. As it says in Hebrews, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You have not changed before the storm, during the storm, or after. I pray that you would reach out to those families who are experiencing loss, and when they cry out, does anyone understand what I'm going through? Whisper in their ear, I know what you're going through because I lost my one and only son. Lord, you know those tears, you know that difficulty, you know that struggle, and because of that, you can walk with them, you can carry them. Lord, we lift up all those on the meditation sheet and all the situations that they're going through. Lord, I lift up each person in this, in this sanctuary, those now who are struggling maybe just to get through today or maybe the week ahead or maybe they're facing surgeries or a test or whatever it might be and they're nervous and afraid. Give them your peace. Give them a peace that the world cannot give, a peace that you told us that if we take your peace, our hearts will never be troubled and they will not be afraid. 
Lord, you sent your Son into the world to give us that peace, to give us forgiveness, to give us the image of unconditional love and forgiveness. But you also sent him in the world to teach us, to teach us how to love and forgive as he did. And he also taught us how to pray as he did when he taught us the words to pray and when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And indeed, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, no matter what you have faced over the last week. He has brought you through it, and he will bring you into the week ahead through his love and through his grace. And he's done that with his love and grace and gifts upon gifts. And as a part of our worship, yes, worship, it is worship to give back some of the wonderful blessings that God has given us. So at this time, I invite the ushers to come forward this morning to receive those gifts and offerings. Gracious Lord, as we go through this sermon series about witnessing throughout the month of September, we're realizing that in our gift giving, we are witnessing to your faith and love in the world. 
You have given us all good gifts, not because we deserve them, but because you love us that much. So out of your great love, Lord, we give them back to you. May they, became a tool, may they become a tool of witness for the world to see that your love is alive and moving and real in the midst of a lost and hurting world. Bless these gifts, Lord, to your honor and to your glory. May they be your hands and feet in the world, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. As we come to the fourth week in our sermon series called Witnessing for Dummies, and please do not take offense at that title. We're piggybacking on the book series, Remember Computers for Dummies, and all those different topics so that uh, it was people who were trying to learn and get better at all those things, whatever that topic might be. So we're talking about Witnessing for Dummies, and my sermon title for this week is called Speak Their Language, as we are in week number four. If you would like to follow along, I invite you to turn to page 1080, page 1080. I'm in the Acts of the Apostles, and I'll be reading from chapter 3, uh, verses 11 through 26. Again, page 1080. And as I read this text, as I do every week, I invite you once again to listen to the word of the Lord. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that this Messiah must suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of ref refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from their people. Indeed, beginning with Samuel, all the prophets who have spoken have foretold these days. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each one of you from your wicked ways. Amen and amen. Will you pray with me? Speak, Lord, through these lips, however unworthy the wonderful words of life. Amen. A four-week sermon series. Paul and I were very excited uh, for this one through September, simply entitled Witnessing for Dummies. So many people in, in my 13 years here and now my 29 years of ministry have said, Reverend Dan, how do, how do we share our faith? How do we tell others about Jesus? So Paul and I have been focused on this topic for the entire month. We've even given you handouts on how to do it, tools to use. If you remember, week one was called Know Your Story. Who is Jesus in your life? How has he moved in your story? How has he made himself known in your story? How has your heart 
been opened up enough to say, Jesus, come into my heart. What changed when you did that? How are you different? How is your life different because Christ has come and taken up residence in your heart? And do you know your story? I've said this many times. No one else can tell your story. It's your story. Only yours is completely unique. In the whole world, in all of human history, no one else will have your story, and it's up to you to know it. Step one in witnessing for dummies is know your story. Step two, week two, was about know their story. Who are the people in your life that, people have, that God has placed in your life? People you love, people you care for, friends, family, acquaintances, maybe somebody you coach with, maybe somebody you serve on a board with, maybe some team you're on with, maybe a book club or PTA. Where do your life stories intersect? Because you have common interests, common values. Same age kids, empty nesters, whatever it might be. Do you know their story and how your stories intersect so that you're always looking for the moments to allow Jesus to come forth from your life when you experience those intersections? Do you know their stories? What are their interests? What do they love? What movies do they watch? We talked about this. How do they spend money? What's important to them? And where do your lives intersect? Then week three was breaking down barriers. Paul talked about last week. So what are the things that keep you from sharing your faith in Christ? Number one reason is fear. We're afraid. We're afraid we might be asked something we don't know or we might have to quote a scripture. And and Paul and I reassured you again that what do you have to know? You just have to know your story of Jesus. Because no one can challenge you on how Christ has changed your life. It's your story. So to overcome the fear is to know that all you have to do is share your story. He also talked about low self-esteem. Who am I that anyone would want to hear my story of Jesus and how he changed me? Or that we try and keep Jesus up here in, in logic and science when Jesus needs to also be alive and moving first and foremost in our hearts. Not discounting the mind at all, but they must work in tandem. Then once we overcome those barriers, now we come to week number four called Speak Their Language. When you get to know their story, when you're getting to know their language, then you can speak that same language. Week two was about getting to know their story. This week's about getting to know how to communicate with them. And that's exactly what Peter was doing in the text today from Acts But I need to go back to verses 1 through 10. Can I do that? Say, that's okay. Can I? Okay. Uh, Because it sets up where we start our text in, in verse 11, and it's important. We find out in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, there's this person literally called the lame beggar. And in the Bible, it's capital L and capital B. We find out in the text that this beggar's been lame since birth. He's never, ever walked. Never, ever stood up never put his weight on his feet. He's been lame since birth. We find out that he's at the temple gate called Beautiful. Now, some of you here have been to Israel on one of the trips we've led, and you know that all the gates, each gate is named a different gate. You've got the Lion's Gate, you've got the Dung Gate, you've got the Beautiful Gate. So today we're talking about the Beautiful Gate, and we're told that every day some people would take the lame beggar and set him at the gate. Not to look for work and not to be brought into worship, but to ask for money so he could make some type of a living. So there he was outside the gate every day asking for money as people went in for prayer and for worship and to buy animals for their their sacrifices. And, And so he would ask them for money as they walked past him to go in the gate. We find out in chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, that Peter and John are making their way into the temple through the beautiful gate. And in the text, Peter says, as the man asks for money, Peter says, look at me. Literally says to the beggar, look at me. The beggar looks at him, and then in verse 6, Peter says this, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
walk. Walk. We are told that Peter takes him by the, by the hand and the man jumps to his feet and begins to walk. The man didn't take a step first. Did you hear what he did? He jumped. Wouldn't you, if you hadn't been able to get up your whole life, and then, then Peter heals you and says, get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this man leaps to his feet and then begins to walk. But he jumps first. People saw it happen and they were shocked. I could see the word spreading throughout the temple. Did you hear about the beggar? That lame beggar is walking. And it goes through the people praying and then the people in line to buy animals for their sacrifices and then the people in the courtyard and then out into the city streets in Jerusalem. And this, the lame beggar can walk and these, these two guys healed him in the name of Jesus. We were told that the people were filled with wonder and amazement. That's where we... <clears throat> enter the story today with the man has just jumped and walked and we find out in our text that he's clinging to Peter and John would you let go I wouldn't let go of the people that just healed me I would hang on to them as long as I possibly could we're told that they are clinging clinging to Peter and John and people came running to see what this man was all about and they were getting ready to hear Peter tell his story they're getting ready for Peter to witness. And Peter in this text, 11 through 26, went through, know your story, know their story, overcome the, overcome the, uh, did I lose my microphone again? These batteries are horrible, horrible. I won't tell you where I got them because then you won't order them anymore, but Amazon doesn't have good batteries. I'm just saying. <laughs> so I'm going to stay up here. So people come from all over to hear Peter's story. How did this happen? He gets to share his story, know their story, overcome his obstacles, and speak their language. Here's how it happened. Peter knows his story. Think of the three years that Peter spent with Jesus. What are some of the highlights? He got to walk on water when Jesus called him out on the Sea of Galilee. Remember that? And then he took his eyes off Jesus and he started to sink, didn't he? And he did one of the shortest, most beautiful prayers I've ever heard. Lord, save me. Any of you ever prayed that prayer before? I have. Lord, save me. Peter was the one that denied him three times in the courtyard. And yet, Jesus called him three more times when he's resurrected. Peter knows his story, the times when he was dialed in with Jesus, times when he let Jesus down, times when they were clicking and times when they were worlds apart. Jesus told Peter, you are the rock and you I will build my church. And then a few verses later, he calls him Satan. That's Peter's story and he knows it. Peter knows their story. Who's coming to worship at the temple? Jews. Peter was a Jew. He knows the stories of the Jewish faith. He knows the prophets. He knows the prayers. He knows temple worship. He knows why they're going into the temple. He knows his story, and he most definitely knows their story. Do you think Peter went through obstacles? What was the obstacle that Peter had to fight with the most? Do you remember when Jesus was crucified? Say, I remember. Right? I'm losing you. I'm seeing yawns and sleepy faces. It must be too warm in here today. Okay, ready? Remember when Jesus was crucified. What do the disciples do after he's crucified? They hide in a room and lock themselves in the room. Why? They were afraid. They were afraid of being arrested. They were afraid of being crucified because they were his disciples. So they hide in a room. Peter understands our fear. How did Peter overcome his fear? Jesus, resurrected, comes into the room. And once Peter met the resurrected Lord, he spent the rest of his life proclaiming the gospel. In fact, died doing it. How did Peter overcome his fears? He met the resurrected Jesus. Knew his story, knew their story. Jesus helped him overcome his fears. Now everything is in place 
for Peter to use their language. So in this text, what do we hear today? Peter says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus. He's quoting their forefathers, Isaac, Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then he goes on, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, saying that the Messiah would suffer. He goes on to say, the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through our holy prophets. God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. That's Moses speaking. He goes on to say, indeed, beginning with Samuel, all the prophets who have spoken have foretold these days. He's quoting and using their language to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what this whole month is about. Us walking through those four beautiful steps so that when God puts people in your, in your circle, you're ready. So I've shared with you many before, both my boys played football. They've been playing since they were in third grade. I've got to know these dads since third grade. My oldest son is a senior. That's nine years of getting to know these dads at football practices, in the bleachers, and social events. I've gotten to know them so well, as I shared with you last week. I've baptized their kids. I've done their weddings. I've walked them through divorces. I've buried their siblings. So I get to use my language with them. On October 13th, we're doing Welcome Sunday, where we're asking everyone to welcome someone to church that day and come with them. Because we have an incredible gospel message to share. You want to know how I ask them to church? Say how. I looked him right in the eye and I said, guys, after all the stuff I've done for you, you owe me one. I've been saying that for three weeks. Guys, you owe me one. October 13th, if you go to another church, go to your church. Keep going. But if you don't, you owe me one. I baptized your babies. I've done your weddings. I've buried your siblings. Give me one hour on a Sunday morning. Come and see what the faith in Jesus Christ is all about. That's my language. I know their language. I can speak uh, touchdowns and offense and defense and interceptions and sprained ankles and concussions and broken wrists and conference championships. That gives me credibility to say to those guys, you owe me one. You have people like that in your world. People who love you and people who trust you. People who are dying for you to invite them to church and meet a risen Savior. Story Church is our second campus in Cleveland. We opened it 10 years ago at a different location. But we did it to start learning a new language. The new language of the west side of Cleveland, a, a language of, of a, a different family that we've never met before, a, a family at, at 9900 Madison Avenue so we can meet a new family of people that we haven't met before and, and teach us new ways to speak the gospel into people's lives. For 10 years, we've been singing, we've been sorting clothes, we've been opening the free store, we've been, we've been reaching out to our community, and guess what's happening down in Beacon Hall today at 1130? We are baptizing Darshel Creighton, who came to Jesus Christ through our ministry at Story Church. We are making a difference in people's lives. Darshel is being baptized at 1130. She's already joined Disciple One, and she'll be up front before us on October 20th, joining our congregation. Why? Because you folks have said a second campus matters, and it needs to be in Cleveland. And because of that, lives are being touched and made new. And we couldn't do it. We couldn't do what we did at Story Church if it wasn't for the Old Bell Mall Society. The monumental undertaking that we have done financially at that campus to basically rebuild that building is because of the Theon Bell Mall Society and what you folks have chosen to do for generations to come. That's why we want you to go outside the door and see what it's all about. See how God might be calling you to make a difference generations to come as you put together your will and estate planning. It's not just something on the west side of Cleveland. It's faces 
and lives being changed. And do you know who's doing it? You. Be proud, church. You're making a difference in people's lives. And we couldn't do it without you. Will you pray with me? Lord, so many times we take it for granted the difference we're making. We come to church on a Sunday and we go home and there's upward basketball games going on. There's car cruises in our parking lot. Bible study is almost every night of the week. A second campus giving away clothes and shoes and toys and toiletries and a worship service over there on Saturday morning. I just pray that people who gather here on Sunday never miss the impact they're having on people's lives. They're sharing their story. They're getting to know other people's stories. We've overcome barriers. And we've learned new languages. Literally. We've learned Swahili and Spanish and so many other languages to communicate with our friends at our Story Church campus. Lord, help us to continue to learn new languages and reach new people for the gospel so that we can watch them give their lives to your son and be baptized. I thank you for each and every person in the pews today because, Lord, we can't do it without them. Continue to give all these people gathered here a double portion of your Holy Spirit and let them say simply, Lord, I am here. Use me. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I invite you to then to stand as you're able and join me for the closing hymn. Please stand.
I invite you then to make your way as you're able, and if you're able, to the gathering area out here so you can see the Theo Bell Mall Society Giving Tree. And there you'll see that so many people have been a part of it, we've had to extend, extend the branches. Uh, what a great sign of such a generous congregation. And there will be some folks from Theo and Bell Mall Society standing there to answer your questions and also to share with you what inspired them to say, I want to remember my church for generations to come to help people meet Christ in the midst of their story. Witnessing for all of us. Know your story. Know theirs. Christ has overcome all your obstacles. Go and speak their language. Give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go now in the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Go in peace. Go in Christ. Amen.